Alright guys, it's Tentacrap here back again today, hope you're enjoying your day so far and today we're going to discuss something I didn't expect to talk about, that being at Call of Duty Mobile and the World Championships which is kind of continuing for that right now. This game has blown up over the last several months, Activision is making so much money off it and it's kind of interesting to look at this in comparison to the CDL and see what the future might potentially be. I'm looking at Call of Duty Mobile, I'm seeing the viewership it has, I'm seeing the numbers it has, I'm seeing actually how good the game is fundamentally even though it's a mobile game and I'm thinking damn if these players start to build personalities, it might be something we have to talk about more often on this channel, but very interesting to compare COD Mobile World Championships to what's going on with the CDL and where Activision's interests may potentially lie, and um, well, honestly, it's kind of remarkable some of the stuff we're going to look at here over the coming minutes. Very intrigued to hear your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section below. Like if you guys enjoy the video, subscribe if you are new as always, I'd greatly appreciate it, really helps out the channel. Firstly, Xset Gaming then confirms their team for the, well, 2020 North America Regional Finals, which will then lead into the World Championship Finals. Also, this was the team. I think it's like a five-man squad plus a substitute or a coach or something like that. And well, this is some of the statistics that we see from not too long ago on the Call of Duty mobile site. 850,000 subscribers. I imagine maybe they rebranded this from another account because like it was MLG COD that was then rebranded to just Call of Duty League and that now has a million subscribers or whatever. But you can see some of the viewers right here. Like yesterday, they were streamed for 8,000 viewers on YouTube. Some of the viewers a few days ago is pretty impressive, quite frankly. We also have this, so I just tuned into the stream yesterday. Golden Boy was hosting it, so a very legendary name in Call of Duty history back in the Halo days. And then they had Maven casting it as well, which we're going to have a look at in a second. We also have the European one, which was a few days ago. I mean, look at this. 500,000 views on day one of the Call of Duty League mobile or Call of Duty mobile Western Europe regional playoffs. This is the Western Europe playoffs with half a million views on the stream. And yes, okay, because it was live streamed, you get the thing where people like tune into the stream, then they come out, then they tune in again, and then you get like an inflated viewership but then again like some of the Call of Duty League streamers were getting like for the big events we're getting like 700 800,000 views for a day and this is getting 500,000 views so it's honestly pretty damn cool ton of pricey of course so shout out to those guys hosting this one and then you've got so well some screenshots here I just wanted to point out exactly what these guys are playing on so this is like the King's Clan for example and they're looking through well favorite weapons favorite maps the weapons don't exactly have the same names but honestly some of these maps just brought me back man and it makes me so sad quite frankly that we had to play competitive on Modern Warfare this year Whereas some of these guys playing on mobile are playing on, um, well, they're playing on some of the maps like Standoff, Firing Range. I mean, all these guys' favorite maps are Standoff. Good pick for them, in my opinion, because it's certainly my favorite map. Probably is my favorite map in Call of Duty history, actually. The Firing Range is certainly up there as well. And then we have the map set for the series as well. So if you guys aren't too familiar with COD Mobile, effectively, they've just taken the best of Call of Duty games from over the years and, you know, amalgamated them into one game. Fundamentally, I would say it's based on Black Ops 2, and it's just beautiful. It just brings a tear to the eye. And, um, you know, maybe one day in Call of Duty, Duty at some point, like you imagine, let's just think the long term right now of the Call of Duty League. Are we going to be playing a new Call of Duty game every single game for the next, or every single year for the next 100 years? Is that going to be how it is? Or is the plan to be like to have one staple Call of Duty game, which is eventually just becomes like the competitive title? Maybe that only happens in five or 10 years time, but it seems to me that maybe at some point you need to just have like a solid game that is the game that is played for like five years and then maybe you switch out to a new one or you update it or something like that. And um, you know, maybe they can base something like that off course. Call of Duty Mobile, that would be really cool, but actually have it played on consoles and PCs or whatever, so the graphics aren't absolutely disgusting as they will be in the clips we see in a couple of minutes here. But as you can see, this was the series that they played, Standoff Hardpoint, Meltdown Search and Destroy, Firing Range Domination, Crash Hardpoint, and then Crossfire S&D, so Crash and Crossfire from Call of Duty 4, Firing Range from Black Ops 1, Standoff and Meltdown from Black Ops 2, I mean honestly, really, really cool to see. This was absolutely hilarious as well, I'll have to play this on screen for you guys at the end of the video. This was the communications that were coming out yesterday from about, well, this match, and, uh, well, honestly, they did, like, an Xperia dialing or whatever they're gonna call it, and I'm not exactly sure if this was the comms of just one team, or whether they somehow had the wires crossed, and, like, we were hearing both teams' communications at once, but regardless, this is absolute chaos, and honestly, I thought it was absolutely hilarious, compared to some of the Call of Duty communication, which is pretty concise, pretty clear, and even in a 5 versus 5 environment, wasn't too bad. This is absolutely something else, and as Revitalize says, can't believe, uh, you know, those comms are coming from this, which is, like, the image of the championship or whatever, the these guys just sitting there on their phones. Is this the future of esports, man? Like, I don't know. Probably not. But uh, it, it's still it's still kind of crazy to look at, quite frankly. Then also scrolling through, well, I looked through Twitter just to see what people are saying about Call of Duty Mobile. And I saw a lot about, like, scrims and about, like, particular highlights, right? And, um, you know, the game might not necessarily be in the greatest state. Because if you look through right here, you can see people using shotguns. I think I saw another clip of someone who just pulled out an RPG and blew up a car on standoff. So maybe they need to um, have some improvements in terms of what the game actually looks like. Because maybe we don't 
want shotguns in the title. Maybe we don't want uh, RPGs in the game and stuff like this. But um, in theory, things look really, really cool. And the maps are just something special. And it would just be great if uh, we actually had something like this to play on in Call of Duty in the long term, right? So instead of having to have Black Ops Cold War, then Modern Warfare, then Advanced Warfare, then Infinite Warfare, then Black Ops 3, all this stuff every single year, which is perfectly fine. But at some point, do we just have a, a solidified Call of Duty game, kind of like what you see League of Legends as and what you see Counter-Strike as, where the game's been the same for, well, like eight, nine years at this point, but they add updates and they change things and they add new maps and maybe they add new weapons and they just tweak things about the game maybe every single year and add new maps and stuff, which would be really cool to uh, to the point where the game like retains its uh, freshness, I suppose. And uh, maybe the long-term Call of Duty trajectory for esports is to have something like that rather than to just play the new game every single year. But um, yeah, maybe that's probably a fair while down the pipeline because the Call of Duty League in some sense is still a marketing tactic for Activision to actually promote people to buy the main Call of Duty game. So I'm not exactly sure what their business model they're looking at in the long term, especially given that a lot of games right now are free to play, right? So like Call of Duty Mobile is free to play Fortnite and Counter-Strike now even is just free to play. You can download it and they make the money via the in-game transactions. Very similar thing that like Fall Guys has done very recently as well. All the all the games seem to be doing this nowadays and uh, Call of Duty not quite there yet, but maybe at some point. So it'll be interesting to see how that develops for Activision because the $60 they get every time someone buys their game is pretty impressive. And um, yeah, I just scrolled through and I found this as well. So I was just looking through Call of Duty Mobile YouTube, or not YouTube stuff, but just videos on Twitter. A lot of people were talking about scrim highlights, right? Like they've been playing these practice matches and get with their team or whatever. And um, yeah, these were the scrim highlights. Honestly, thought this was pretty cool. I mean, this does bring me back to playing standoff. I think this is domination or whatever. So um, pretty cool stuff, quite frankly. And I looked through as well to see what perks they had in the game. So you can see right here, these are the game modes, the score streaks as well. So you've got a VTOL warship, like a predator missile, a dragon fire, hunter killer drone, hardline. A lot of this basically, as you can see, is based on Black Ops 2. You guys can pause if you want to read through everything here. Also, I found this as well. These are the maps that are in the game right now. You've got Hijacked from Black Ops 2, Nuketown originally from Black Ops 1, Crash, Takeoff, Crossfire, Summit, Standoff, Raid, Kill House, and Firing Range. With some more, you've got Search and Destroy, Hardpoint Domination, TDM in the game right now. So it's so cool, and these guys are playing for so much money, right? Which is just like out of control as far as I'm concerned. Get another one here, which is kind of like scrim highlights as well of this guy frying on this Standoff Domination, which seems to be a favorite of many players. And also, just before we finish the video, then I thought I'd bring this up an article that I'll leave linked for you guys down below from the 2nd of October. Call of Duty Mobile spending reaches $480 million in the first year. 270 million total downloads. So it's made $480 million for Activision in total revenue. $215 of which has come from the US market. $239 million over the same period for Fortnite on mobile, which is pretty similar, quite frankly, given how big Fortnite is, especially for like kids on mobile and stuff like that. $274 million for PUBG Mobile. The game has nearly $270 million downloads to date, reaching $148 million in its first month alone. So remarkable stuff. I'm sure Activision are going to continue to pump the investment into this and at some point like what's going to happen to the Call of Duty League right of course it's played on the current game but uh, maybe they take some hints and tips from the Call of Duty Mobile League to uh, help improve the Call of Duty League in the long term and is it going to be overshadowed if we get to a point where some of the mobile players actually have some personalities right it's kind of a funny thing and I'll probably end up talking about it on this channel from time to time when something particularly big happens but if these guys start building personalities and start building names there could be a proper scene around this right which is kind of an exciting prospect because the viewers seem to be there already and I'm kind of wondering how exactly I make videos to tap into that but we'll see how things go. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, I'd greatly appreciate a like on the video. It really helps out the YouTube algorithm know you enjoy this content. Other people like you may enjoy this content as well. Thank you for watching as always. Take care and I will see you next time. Hey, now let's hear the comps from Tribe. <laughs> Send back, send back.
Maven, what in the hell was that? Maven, I can't breathe. I, hold on, give me a second. I don't think we. Someone got the wires crossed on audio because that could not have been. That wasn't a listening. That was. We just hopped into like a preschool with like kids battling over a box of crayons. Well, I I, I made out I think three words. Uh, Barely three words. I heard, Listen, man, I have heard a lot of player comms in my career, and like the CDL players are cracked. They are screaming, but you can understand what is being said. I don't know what I just listened to. That, that wasn't even English. I thought I was listening to aliens fight. I, I spoke to them and I asked what their, their greatest strength was, and their response was our comms. So, what? I, I, I mean, maybe they speak some, you know, it's just something we don't understand maven i think that's just a little a little thing between the players